Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 29th September 2019. I am Sagarnandi, designer and developer of Q Trading Systems and Techniques. I used to work in information technology. I retired about 5-6 years ago. I work mostly in Singapore. Now I am living in Thailand. I trade primarily stocks sometimes stock options in the USA market as well as in global markets. I share my stock and market analysis regularly in the traders forum saganandi.com on my Twitter page saganandi and my YouTube channel trading profitably. All of these are open to the public and you are most welcome to visit them. Before I start the market roundup, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will look for potential trade opportunities using what I call complete 360 degrees analysis that is trying to find opportunities where the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level forces are aligned. I am beginning the commodities analysis using oil ETF USO looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart earlier oil was inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top support memory trend line at the bottom. I was waiting for USO to break out of this triangle pattern which happened one week earlier. At that time in the daily chart price jumped up, gapped up and it hit the upper boundary level. That was too extended for me to take any long trade. Then it pulled back to value area and moved sideways for a while. The traffic light candle color turned yellow. At that time in the webinar I mentioned that if price went up from there and gave a cyan flow color candle in the daily chart that might give a go with flow trend following long trade setup. However that didn't happen price didn't go up, we didn't have a sign flow candle in the daily chart, instead price fell down. Therefore you don't try to buy US oil. Now it is at the memory support line in the daily chart. If price goes up from here, you may see if that gives us a go with flow trend following long trade setup. We have higher low and higher high. Therefore, if we have a cyan flow candle in the daily chart, that may give us a trend following long trade setup. For that signal to be confirmed, we will need the weekly backdrop color also to turn to cyan. If that happens, then we will have a confirmed go with flow long setup. If the daily candle turns cyan but the weekly is not cyan yet, then you may 
go to lower time frame intraday chart using real time system and look for a low risk buy setup in US oil. From US oil, I move on to gold ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, gold had a robust up move. Then at the very top, it displayed this reversal candle at price extreme high. At that time, in the webinar, I mentioned it would be safe to exit gold long position. After that, gold drop and then moving sideways. One week ago, Friday ended with a cyan color candle in the daily chart. That is the flow candle color was bullish. At that time, I mentioned that if price went up, you might look for a long setup. Go with flow long setup. However, the weekly never turned cyan. Therefore, we did not have a confirmed go with flow setup using the weekly daily templates. How could you take a long trade? You could move from weekly to intraday time frame and take a long trade as price started to go up from this candle onwards. And as price went up for two days, using real time chart, you could probably have a profitable long trade in gold. However, that was not a go with flow long trade setup because the go with flow long trade setup is designed for use using the weekly daily chart template. What about now? At the right edge, the backdrop candle color in the weekly chart is magenta bearish. That is not telling us to take any long trade. In the daily chart, price is inside a triangle pattern. Its direction is not clear. I will wait for it to break out of the triangle pattern. That is for the direction to be clearer before attempting my next swing trade in gold. After the commodities analysis, I continue with the market level analysis. Starting with the S&P 500 ETF SPY. When SPY was at this price point, I mentioned that I was not going to take any long trade because price was at the weekly watermark resistance, daily watermark resistance, where bearish headwind appeared earlier, possible reversal signal that led to a price drop and daily had a bearish headwind again. That was a wise decision because from there price drop. At the right edge, the backdrop candle color and the traffic light candle color, both are bearish. Therefore, I am not going to look for any long trend because it is already some distance away from the recent top I am not going to look for any short trade as well. What can be the possible next trade? One possibility is that price goes up little bit and then tilts down again, giving a lower high. That may signal a trend following short trade setup. The other possibility is that price drops to the memory trend line support and then reverses from there, then you may look for a bounce long trade setup. At that time, weekly will also probably come to the memory support and bounce from there. That will give us further confidence to take a bounce long trade. NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ. Here also the weekly backdrop is bearish color. The daily flow is also bearish color. Weekly is right at the memory support. Daily broke below the memory support. 
However, Friday ended with a lower tail candle. This is not a point where I will like to take either long or short trend. What are the possibilities? If price goes up and then reverses from one of these memory resistance lines, then I will be happier to take a short trend. Or if price comes to this memory support trend line and reverses from there, then I will be happier to take a long trend. Right now, I will avoid taking any trade in QQQ. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA A similar picture like QQQ The weekly backdrop color is bearish Daily traffic light color is also bearish A price can now go up to the memory resistance and reverses from there Then I may look for a shorting opportunity Or if price goes to the daily memory support line at which point it will also come to the weekly memory support line and reverses from there then i will look for a buy setup russell 2000 etf iwm again the weekly backdrop is bearish daily candle color is also bearish However, daily is far away from the recent high that doesn't give me any low risk shorting opportunity. When price was at the recent top, it came to the memory resistance in weekly as well as daily. In that market roundup webinar, I categorically mentioned, though many people were bullish on IWM, that I was going to look for a shorting opportunity instead of a buying opportunity. That was because price came to the memory resistance lines which tend to act as effective resistance. And at that time the weekly activity or volume was very high. That is why I looked for an exertion based shorting opportunity. One way to take the short trade would be to use short call vertical, setting the short leg at the memory resistance level. As price fell from there, you would have significant profit in that short trade. When price was falling during those days, using intraday chart, I had taken some additional very profitable short trades. Those were day trades and when I take day trades in any of the market ETFs which are pretty liquid, IWM is also very liquid, I tend to take them using weekly options. Options that are expiring the next week. Those give very high profit if your direction is right. And if your direction is wrong, you need to exit the trade quickly with a small loss. That is why it is important to define your stop loss point as well as initial profit target point before you place your trade. Using that disciplined approach, I could trade IWM and also QQQ several times in this period using intraday charts. I took those trades using weekly put options. What about now? Now it is already some distance away from the recent high. I am not going to look for any swing short trade. As the traffic light color in daily and backdrop color in weekly both are bearish, I am not going to look for any long trade also. For swing trading, what are the next possibilities? If price goes back up to the memory resistance and reverses from there, I will be pretty happy to look for a short setup. Or if price comes to this watermark support in daily, at which point it will also come to the watermark support in weekly, 
and reverses from there, I'll be pretty happy to look for a long setup at that time. From the market ETF study, you can see that both backdrop as well as traffic or flow candle color in weekly and daily respectively are bearish for all the four market ETFs. However, none of them are giving low risk shorting opportunity right now. Market is looking bearish but there is no low risk shorting opportunity. Let's see how is the reading from the sector performance. Here I am looking at one month sector performance analyzing the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of the current week, green bar previous week and blue bar two weeks before that. Together they represent one month of sector performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, three of the 11 sectors went up, real estate, utilities, consumer staples. All are in defensive areas. All the other eight sectors went down. From the ETF study, you saw that for two successive weeks, the market dropped. And if you look at the red bars and the green bars, you can see that most of the sectors also dropped this week and previous week. Prior to that, the market had jumped up. That is reflected in the blue bars coming to the right side of the zero line. Right now, more sectors are down than up and they are down by bigger percentages. At the sector level also, the market is looking bearish. If you compare this week's sector performance with previous week, this is the sector analysis I shared one week ago in the market roundup. You can see utilities and real estate were up that week as well. These two are continuing to be the strongest sector in recent periods. Looking at that, you might want to drill down into these sectors and look for buy setups and not the other non-defensive sectors. Recently, I shared a long opportunity in one of the real estate sectors. You may look at that analysis in my Traders Forum post. From the sector performance snapshot of this week and the previous week, you could see how the sectors are transitioning. They are rotating. However, that snapshot view is not the optimal tool to see sector rotation. To visualize sector rotation easily, I use this scorecard and heat map where I look at the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 day, 5 day, etc. Cyan represents strength, magenta represents weakness. With a simple glance, you can identify the strongest sectors of the week. Real estate and utilities, the weakest sectors of the week, energy and healthcare. If you are looking for a buy setup, you may look for them in real estate utilities. If you are looking for a short setup, you may look for them in healthcare and energy. In that way, you will be aligning your trades with the sector level force. Another way to use the sector scorecard is to use the acceleration deceleration that is shown in the base column. By using deceleration, you will like to find short ideas in the most decelerating 
sectors that will be financials, information technology and healthcare. Or you might look for buying opportunities in the most accelerating sectors that will be consumer discretionary and materials. You can see that acceleration and deceleration sometimes leads you to opportunities that will not be obvious from only the sector scorecard and heat map. Combining the acceleration, deceleration and the strength, you may now look for buying opportunities in real estate, utilities, consumer discretionary or materials and you will look for shorting opportunities in financials, information technology, healthcare and energy. If you notice carefully, you will see that healthcare is one sector that is one of the weakest and also one of the most decelerating. For me, that will be the ideal sector to look for a short setup because it is not only weak but it is also decelerating very fast. As I tend to say, sector level is quite broad. You may align your trades with the sector strength. However, before making your actual trading decision, you may drill down into the industry level. Let's say healthcare industries identify those healthcare industries that are weakest and look for shorting candidates in those weak industries. That way you will be aligning your sector level force as well as the industry level force with your trade setup. If you are using top-down analysis then you first look at the market the market showed that it is bearish. Backdrop color as well as traffic light, daily candle color, both are bearish. Then we looked at sector performance. That is also bearish because more sectors are down and they are down by bigger percentages. Further, we found healthcare, which is not only one of the worst performers but also most decelerating sector. In top-down analysis, next step will be to look at the weakest healthcare industries. Why don't I do that now? These are the healthcare industries. Healthcare distributor is least weak and its base is also cyan color. Whereas all the other healthcare industries, they are weak, shown by 5 day score in magenta, and the pace column is also not showing any acceleration. This will be the ideal industries to look for shorting opportunity. What kind of stock will I try to short? I will look for shorts that are fundamentally weak. How? Let me demonstrate by drilling down into the stocks of these weak healthcare industries. These are the stocks from the healthcare industries that are weak. I can look for fundamentally weak stocks in different ways using the smart filters. Let me look for overvalued stocks. These are stocks with magenta color under valuation column. These are overvalued. Let me further look for stocks where earnings is going down in the latest quarter. I am left with these few stocks. I can sort by the latest quarterly earnings data and I want to focus on only those few stocks where earnings is significantly negative in the latest quarter. I am left with only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stocks. 
I started with the whole market. Market was bearish. Drill down into sectors. Healthcare looked weak and also decelerating. From there, I went to the industries, found the healthcare industries that are weakest. Then further drill down to stocks, found only five stocks that are overvalued. Valuation is in magenta. Earnings in the latest quarter is decelerating as well as significantly negative. So for these five stocks, I have successfully aligned market level, sector level, industry level, fundamental level forces for a shorting opportunity. The last step will be to align the weakness from the technical level. Let me analyze CCRN. Why I am looking at it is because it is very close to 52 week high. Of course, it is overvalued, has negative earnings growth in the latest quarter and in fact negative earnings growth in last three yearly periods also. Weak in terms of valuation, weak in terms of earnings growth, however very close to 52 week high. If we can find a shorting opportunity at that price point, that may be very lucrative shorting opportunity. However, we will need to confirm the trade setup using technical charts. That I can do easily using the technical trading system that I use. This is CCRN using the weekly, daily at a glance template. The stock is looking weak. It rallied in the weekly chart displayed long upper tail candles for three successive weeks. This week's backdrop color is bearish. The candle color is also bearish. In the daily, it broke below the memory support. Earlier, it was in a triangle pattern. When a stock breaks out of a triangle pattern, then you may look for a trade in the breakout direction. On Friday, it broke down below the triangle, while the weekly is also bearish. That is the time to look for a shorting opportunity. If you look at the price extreme or pendulum band indicator, you see that it is at price extreme high. We also saw from the fundamental scorecard that it is close to 52 week high. At a high price point, breaking down below support with bearish color in weekly and daily and the relative performance is showing that it is underperforming the market. This is one of the stocks where I may look for a breakout shorting opportunity. That was a live demonstration once again of how you can use the very powerful top-down analysis to identify low-risk, high-probability trading opportunities and you don't need to spend long hours to identify those trade setups. Sometimes you may want to identify trades not using top-down analysis but using bottom-up analysis. You can do that by running the sonar or search programs. If you are looking for a short breakout candidate, you may run the short breakout scan first on a list of stocks of your interest. For option trading, I like to use this list of stocks, 324 stocks are there. These stocks have high liquidity, not only in terms of stocks but also in terms of their options. You can run the scan either on end of day data or real time data on the list of stocks to look for breakouts in any time frame. You may use the daily time frame or even weekly time frame to look for stocks that are breaking down. Once you find those stocks 
and you have a low risk shorting opportunity, next step will be to look for their fundamentals. They should be fundamentally weak in terms of either earnings or valuation or maybe both. Further, you will look for their industries to be either weak or decelerating. Once you do that, using the bottom-up approach also, you will identify trade setups that are very high probability and low risk. In this weekly market roundup, I tend to analyze stocks using top-down analysis. Every Wednesday, I also conduct a live webinar. It's open to the public. You may register for the webinar from the webinar menu on my traders forum page sagarnandi.com. In that webinar, I use bottom-up analysis to identify trading opportunities. Let me summarize. One week ago, I titled my weekly market roundup I am looking for bearish trading opportunities. That was very appropriate. Market drop. All my short trades were profitable. What about this week? This week the market is continuing to be bearish. The weekly backdrop color and daily traffic light or flow color in the market ETFs. The four market ETFs that I study all are bearish. Therefore, you may look for bearish trades. In which sectors? Sectors that are also weak or decelerating. And which industries? Again, industries that are weak or decelerating. Healthcare is a promising sector for shorting opportunities because it is not only one of the weakest sectors, but it is also one of the most decelerating sectors this week. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.